वेलकम टू शांति पीस फॉर मैथमेटिक्स इन योर प्रीवियस स्टडीज यू हैव अ लर्न रिगार्डिंग अ लिमिट कंटिन्यूटी डिफरेंसिबिलिटी ऑफ फंक्शन इन द कैलकुलेशन इन दिस वीडियो विल डिस्कस विद द इंक्रीजिंग एंड द डिक्रीजिंग नेचर ऑफ द फंक्शन बाय अ स्ट्रेचिंग ऑफ अ ग्राफ ऑफ अ डिफरेंसिबल फंक्शन pattern of increment and the decrement in the value of the function can be determined this video will gives you a various taste to check increasing and the decreasing behavior of the function so let us understand what is the definition of increasing function a function f is said to be increasing if the value of the function f of x is increase with the increment in the value of x so in the graph if i can draw this is my x axis and y axis and if this is the graph of the function and you can just see that there is a two point here if i consider let's say this point is x1 and x2 so correspondingly their values on y axis that is your f of x1 and f of x2 they are increased that means if you have a function f which is defined on a interval i to r is said to be increasing if for every x1 x2 belongs to i x1 is less than x2 implies f of x1 is less than f of x2 the example of increasing function is f of x is equal to ln of x in the domain 0 to infinity the next definition one can give the decreasing function so the decreasing function is the function whose graph is decreased if you if you decrease the value increment in the value of x so this is the things if you have this is your x1 and x2 so correspondingly the value will be decrease so if i want to say a function f is a decreasing if the function is defined from interval i to r if for every x1 x2 belongs to i x1 is less than x2 implies f of x1 is greater than f of x2 the example of a decreasing function is f of x is equal to 1 by x in its domain that is zero minus infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity union minus infinity to 0 the graph of this function we know it is this and it is a decreasing function increasing so these are the some definition of the increasing and the decreasing function some functions are there which are neither increasing nor decreasing in their domain so for example if i can draw a function f of x is equal to x cube minus 4x and in the domain of in the domain of this function it it will be look like it's passing through zero and again it will be so this point is actually minus 2 this is zero this one is 2 and here may be a 3 and then it will again goes like this so the question is this function is neither increasing and nor decreasing in that domain but in particular in sub sub some intervals for example from the minus 1 to 1 this function is decreasing and from 1 to 3 this function is increasing so the way is the function behave that in some intervals it may have increasing function and in some intervals it may have decreasing so if you want to calculate in which interval the function is increasing or decreasing we have a first taste for that that is that is known as first derivative test 
so what is this first derivative taste tells you it's regarding your first derivative of the function it is positive or negative so first what you required a function you required which is defined over the interval a b to r so this is a function let f be this and f will satisfy the two condition the first one is f is continuous on close interval ab and second one f is differentiable on open interval ab and if there will be two situation is there if the f dash of x is greater than 0 for every x is in ab then f is increasing function on ab the second condition is says that f dash of x is less than 0 for every x is in ab then f is decreasing function on interval ab so this test is known as a first derivative test and if you can further extend this test and to calculate the maxima and the minima of the function so for that you have to understand what do you mean by a maxima and the minima of the function that means a function will obtain its uh, maximum value and the minimum value so let us give you an an example and uh, calculate means see this suppose this is the graph of the function you have and in this graph of the function a first derivative tells it's also seen that that a, a points where the graph has the slope is zero so at this three points the graph has a slope slope zero that means a first derivative at this points if this point is x0 if this point is x1 and if it is this point is x2 then the the slope of that tangent line at that point x0 x1 and x2 is zero so it will suggest that if you have the first derivative is zero and that will gives you your either the function is local maxima and a local minima so this is a local maximum point this is a local minimum point this is also local maximum point here your f dash is you say you say that it is a slope of the tangent line here it is increasing so that's why it is greater than 0 here the slope is decreasing so that's why it is less than 0 here is also increasing so it is f dash is greater than 0 and here it is decreasing so that is the situation you have here at the point x0 a slope of this tangent line is zero so we have a condition and this points where the function has a local maximum or a local minimum that point it's called a critical points so how to obtain the critical points the to obtain the critical points or i can say x0 is equal to 0 then f dash of x0 is equal to 0 then we can say that x0 is a critical point so this is the definition of the critical point and x0 it's called a critical point is either this x uh, f dash of x0 0 or derivative is does not exist so i may write the definition in proper manner a point x0 it's called critical point if f dash of x0 is 0 or the derivative 
does not exist at that point exists at x0 so this is the known to for the critical points so we have a first derivative test for to find out the extremum points extremum points means it is a function have the maximum value or it has a minimum value so for that we have a change or i can say a statement is says that if you have a function f which is define on closed interval ab to r and that two condition is already there f is continuous on closed interval ab and f is differentiable on open interval ab then if the x0 is a critical point of the function critical points means either this or this is there then f of x0 is said to be relatively maximum if f dash of x changes from negative to positive at x0 and it's called relatively minimum if f dash of x changes from positive to a negative at x0 that means in the previously we have drawn the same figure here you can see that this is called a local or relative maximum if a sign of f dash the derivative is changing from positive to negative at this point here it is negative to positive so that is uh, known as relatively maximum or minimum there does not exist a relatively maximum or minimum if there is a no change of sign in x0 now let us see the definition of inflection a point x0 where a graph of the function has a tangent and where the concavity change is a point of inflection now what does it mean of a concavity change that means it's it's concave up or concave concave down so a point is said to be in other way it's x0 is said to be a inflection point if x0 is a tangent at x0 there exists an interval containing x0 such that f of x is concave up one side or it is at concave downward side on the other that means this point what do you mean by concave up this is called concave up and this one is called concave down so at this point x0 this graph is concave up and then it is going down at this point either it is concave down and then again it is concave up so whenever the situation is this type then that point is known as point of inflection let us suppose that f is a continuous point at the stationary point this x0 is a stationary point and if you are f dash of x0 is positive on the open interval extending the left hand corner of x0 
and f dash of x0 is negative on open interval extending a right hand side of the x0 so this is the situation you have so this is the function at the point x0 on the left hand side that means on this side this is the point x0 so in this interval the f dash is positive so that is f dash of f dash is positive on this side f dash is negative then f has local maximum at the point x0 the second thing we can discuss is f dash of x0 is negative from the left hand side that means the situation is this this is my point x0 and from the left hand side the f dash is negative so f dash is negative here it is f dash is positive on the other side then f has local minimum so this is a local minimum and this is a local maximum so this is the way you can looking at the function and its local minimum and the maximum the other things that we have conclude that f dash of x has the same sign on open interval extending a left and right from left x0 on the other extending from right that means there is a point suppose this is the graph of the function at this point f dash of x is 0 then the x0 so it is not changing its sign at this point from left to right in this situation this x0 it's called the inflection point so f dash of x has same sign on the open interval so this is my x0 here so on this side it has the same sign and on the other side also we have a same sign and then this point it's called inflection point in this situation what is the happening is f dash of x is negative here and here f dash of x is positive but here the f double dash of x is positive and f double dash of x is negative here and on this point we'll have f double dash is zero so this conclusion will gives you a second derivative test for extreme value and will have that test is if f is a twice differentiable function function on the interval ab if x0 is belongs to ab and f dash of x0 is equal to 0 and f double dash of x0 is greater than 0 then f of x0 has local minimum at x0 and f dash of x0 is equal to 0 and f double dash of x0 is negative then f of x0 has local maximum at x0 so this is known as a second derivative test for finding a local maximum or a local minimum in short it is known as a second derivative test for local extreme points the other concept is knowing that the function is concave up and the concave down so as i already discussed that the concave up is this situation this is a concave up and in this situation it is concave down so using the derivative we also can conclude 
regarding the concave up and concave down the theorem or the statement is says like this f is a tri twice differentiable function on the interval ab and if f dash of double dash of x is positive on ab then f is concave up on ab and if f double dash of x is less than 0 on ab then f is concave down on ab so this is another way is to looking at the situation where it is concave up and concave down let us see some of the examples to discuss with this whatever the concepts I have talked here we have discussed regarding the first derivative test which tells you that a function will be increasing or decreasing and then we have talked about the stationary points inflection points we have talked regarding the concave up and concave down using the double derivative test we can able to find out the maxima or a maxima or minima of the function or extreme value of the function let us solve certain examples with this concept let us determine the interval at which f of x is equal to 2x cube plus 3x square minus 12x plus 7 is increasing and b it is decreasing so here the question is to obtain in which situation or in this which interval it will be increasing function or decreasing function so as per our things or a first derivative test we have to calculate what is the first derivative of this function so first f of x is given is 2x cube plus 3x square minus 12x plus 7 now what is the derivative of this function will gives you this will implies that f dash of x is 6x plus 6x square plus 6x minus 12 now f dash of x is 0 implies it is as per this it is 6 6x square plus 6x minus 12 equal to 0 and you just see that it is x square plus x minus 2 equal to 0 which will gives you x square plus 2x minus x minus 2 equal to 0 which will gives you x is common out so x plus 2 minus 1 x plus 2 equal to 0 which will have is x is equal to 1 and minus 2 so this we can say that the critical value of the function f is x is equal to 1 and minus 2 so these are the critical points so that means the function have changes its behavior at this two point 1 and minus 2 let us consider a real line and in that we have a two critical points we found the first one is minus 2 another one is 1 now the whole real line will divide into three intervals or i can say three sub intervals the first one is minus infinity to minus 2 the second one is minus 2 to 1 the another interval is 1 to infinity so we'll divide these things into three parts the here you have the your x which will be the smaller than minus 2 if x is a smaller than minus 2 and your f dash of x we have found and that was factorized so that will write here your f dash of x is 6 into x plus 2 x minus 1 that we have already factorized into this here and from that we have concluded that this will be this now if x is less than minus 2 then one should know that x plus 2 
is negative and x minus 1 is also negative. So your f dash of x here will be positive in this interval. So here your f dash is positive. Let us see that what if it is your x is between minus 2 and 1. If x is between minus 2 and 1, x plus 2 will be positive and x minus 1 will be negative. So here in this case, f dash is negative. Here what you have your x will be greater than 1. That means the value of all x which are greater than 1. So you have x plus 2 is obviously greater than 0 and x minus 1 is also greater than 0. So your f dash of x here will be positive. So here it will be positive. So what is the conclusion we can make out of this? In the interval minus infinity to minus 2 the function is increasing. So let us write this conclusion into the next slide that is if our function function f is increasing on as per our discussion that if the f dash is positive then the function is increasing and if f dash is negative then the function is decreasing. So it is increasing in this interval that is minus infinity to minus 2 union minus 2 to 1 and f is decreasing on the interval minus 2 to 1. So this is I think so it is 1 to infinity is there. So I have made a mistake over there. It is 1 to infinity. Yeah. Fine. Let us see one more example. So the question is the same. Find the interval in which the function f of x is equal to x upon 1 plus x square is increasing or decreasing. So for that I need to calculate what is f dash of x. To calculate the f dash of x you just see that it is u upon v is that so I have to apply the division rule. So the as per the rule it says that denominator square denominator is as it is. The derivative of a numerator will give me 1 minus numerator as it is the derivative of denominator will give you 2x. And if we further simplify this, this will give me 1 plus x square minus 2x upon 1 plus x whole square. And hence this will give me 1 minus, this is 2x square. So it will give me 1 minus x square upon 1 plus x whole square. So finally, what we can conclude from this is f dash of x is equal to 0 implies 1 minus x square equal to 0 because the denominator so and this will give me x is equal to plus or minus 1. Since this will give me plus or minus 1, these are the two critical points we have. So whole interval now, that means whole real line will divide into three parts that is minus 1 and 1 let us say it is here then it will divide into three intervals. The first interval is minus infinity to minus 1. The next interval is minus 1 to 1 and the third interval is 1 to infinity. Now in this three intervals we have to check whether your function so derivative that is f dash of x which we have calculated it is of the form 1 upon 1 plus x square whole square. One should note that the denominator is always positive. If x is smaller than minus 1, then we have to check whether the numerator, because the denominator is always positive because it is a square of some positive number. And the numerator you can just say it is 1 minus x, 1 plus x. So the 1 minus x, so it is 1 plus x is always negative and 1 minus x that means for example x is minus 2 then this will all be always gives me positive so your f dash of x here will be negative because a negative 
and positive combinedly gives me a negative answer so in this case f is f dash of x is less than 0 here in the interval minus that means your x is between minus 1 and 1 if x is between minus 1 and 1 1 minus x is always negative and x plus 1 is always negative so therefore your f dash is positive here and in the case of x is greater than 1 that means uh, all the value which are bigger than 1 1 minus x is negative and 1 plus x will be always positive so here your f dash of x is negative so ultimately what is the conclusion it is make is here your function is negative here it is positive and here it is negative so negative so function is decreasing here then it is increasing here and then it is decreasing so finally what is the conclusion is make is out of this it says that f is increasing on minus 1 and 1 in the interval minus 1 and 1 and f is decreasing on minus infinity to minus 1 union 1 to infinity let us solve one more problem determine the interval where a graph of the function f of x is equal to x raised to 5 minus 5 x raised to 4 plus 40 x square plus 10 x minus 12 is concave up and concave down and identify the all inflection point so you have to calculate what is the inflection point in which interval the function has concave up and concave down and you just recall that to do that we need to have to check what is the second derivative test so for that i need to find out what are the second derivatives of the function the function is given is to 5 minus 5 x raised to 4 plus 40 x square plus 10 x minus 12 so let us calculate the first derivative of that which will give me 20 sorry 4 x power 4 minus 20 x cube plus 80 x plus 10 the second derivative will give me is 20 x cube minus 60 x square plus 80 you just observe that this 20 is common out from this 3 you will left with x cube minus x square plus 4 and this x cube minus x square plus 4 can be factorized into the 3 term that is x plus 1 x minus 2 square you can check this yourself now here to check whether the function has concave up and concave down you have to check whether your function f dash of x is negative or positive so here your interval that means substituting this values or putting in the equation f double dash of x is equal to 0 will implies that 20 x plus 1 into x minus 2 square equal to 0 which will give me x is equal to minus 1 and 2. So these are the two inflection points for possibility these are the two inflection points are there but you need to check whether the f double derivative is changing at this point or not 
that means the whole interval now will divide into this two parts that is from minus 1 to 2. So let us chop, check for the interval minus 1, 2. What will be the f double derivative? That means the value of x is between minus 1 and 2. What happened? This is always positive. What happened to the x plus 1? The x plus 1, since x is between minus 1 and 2, x plus 1 is always positive. So this quantity is positive. So therefore, f is concave up here. For the interval two to infinity, that means in this interval two to infinity on this part. What about f dash of x? That means if the value of x is bigger than two, for example, it is three, then this will be positive. So your f double dash is positive here. So here is also f is concave up. For the interval minus 1, sorry, side on this portion, you have to check whether this function is positive or negative. So, in that case, your x, the value of x is smaller than minus 1. In that case, this quantity x plus 1 is negative. So, that this will be negative so your f double dash is negative and here you have it is concave down so here only one sign x is equal to minus 1 is the point where the graph is changing this nature from the concave down to concave up so that's why x is equal to minus 1 is the inflection point as it is changing as f double derivative of x that is f double derivative of minus 1 change sign that's it for this video if you like this video please press the like button if you have any comments suggestion or a question please drop down in a comment box below see you in next video till then bye bye Sayonara.